Have you ever questioned the nature of your reality? What if I told you that everything you perceive might just be a sophisticated simulation? From the dawn of civilization, the enigmatic nature of reality has captivated the minds of many. Philosophers have pondered whether life is merely a shadow play on the walls of a cave, while modern scientists explore realms that challenge our deepest intuitions. Imagine a world where every decision, every moment, every seemingly spontaneous event is pre-orchestrated in a cosmic computer program. This notion, known as the simulation hypothesis, isn't just science fiction. It raises profound questions about what it means to be free, to make choices, and to exist. Could our understanding of free will be nothing more than programmed illusions within a larger algorithm? These questions aren't new. They've been debated for centuries, yet they remain as tantalizing and elusive as ever. Keep these questions in mind as we delve deeper into the intriguing world of the simulation hypothesis. The simulation hypothesis presents a futuristic scenario straight out of a sci-fi novel. Imagine for a moment that your entire existence, every sight, every sound, and every sensation is actually a sophisticated digital construct. This is the core of the simulation hypothesis. It suggests that we and our entire universe might be part of an elaborate simulation created by a highly advanced civilization. The roots of this thought-provoking hypothesis aren't entirely modern. Philosophers have long questioned the nature of reality. René Descartes, a 17th century philosopher, famously doubted everything he could, proposing that all he knew might be a deception by an evil demon. This radical skepticism laid foundational thoughts that question the authenticity of our perceptions. Fast forward to the 21st century and you have Nick Bostrom of Oxford University who brought a formal structure to these philosophical quandaries. In 2003, Bostrom proposed that at least one of the following propositions is true. One, humans almost certainly will not survive to reach a post-human stage. Two, any post-human civilization is extremely unlikely to run a significant number of simulations of their evolutionary history. Or three, we are almost certainly living in a computer simulation. The idea hinges on the advancement of technology. If a future civilization were to reach a post-human stage with immense computing power, they might run simulations of their ancestors, us, to either study their own evolutionary history or for reasons we can't yet fathom. This leads us to an intriguing possibility. If we are living in a simulation, then the laws of physics in our universe could be mere parameters set by the simulator. Our sense of free will and consciousness could also be programmed constructs. So if our reality might be a simulation, who or what controls it? Now let's shift gears and tackle the enigmatic concept of free will within this potential simulation. The simulation hypothesis, a mind-bending theory, suggests that our reality might be a sophisticated digital construct overseen by an advanced civilization. But what does this imply for our free will? If every event and decision is part of a vast code, are we truly the authors of our choices? To delve into this, we must consider the realm of quantum physics, which introduces a layer of uncertainty absent in classical physics. Unlike the predictable laws of Newtonian mechanics, quantum mechanics reveals a world where outcomes are probabilistic rather than deterministic. This inherent unpredictability could be the key to understanding free will in a simulated universe. Consider the work of scientists like Roger Penrose, who ventured beyond conventional boundaries by linking quantum processes to human consciousness. Penrose proposed that quantum events in the brain's neurons could be the origin of non-computable functions, potentially giving rise to free will. If true, this suggests that even in a simulated environment, there might be elements of unpredictability, not entirely governed by the simulator's algorithms. Further exploring these quantum processes, we encounter the principle of superposition, where particles exist in multiple states simultaneously until observed. This principle might metaphorically parallel our decision-making processes, where multiple potential choices coexist until one is made. Here, the act of making a decision could be akin to collapsing a quantum superposition into a single state, a choice. This leads us to ponder. If quantum mechanics can influence thought processes, and if these processes are inherently unpredictable, does this grant a semblance of autonomy within a simulation? Or, despite the quantum randomness, are the choices we perceive as free merely illusions crafted by the underlying code of the simulation? As we grapple with these questions, we must consider the implications of such theories on our understanding of consciousness and reality. Are we autonomous beings capable of genuine choices, or are we enacting scenarios preordained by a higher computational power? 
Does the unpredictability of quantum mechanics grant us free will? Or are we merely following a pre-written script? With such a bold hypothesis, one must ask, is there any evidence to support or refute the idea of a simulated reality? Let's start by acknowledging the elephant in the room. There is no direct evidence that unequivocally confirms we are living in a simulation. However, proponents of this simulation hypothesis point to several intriguing aspects of our universe that might suggest otherwise. First, consider the rapid advancement of video game technology. From simple pixelated games to now near photorealistic simulations, our capacity to create increasingly complex virtual environments has grown exponentially. This mirrors the predictions of tech visionaries like Elon Musk, who suggests that if humanity continues on its current technological trajectory, creating indistinguishable simulated realities could become feasible. Furthermore, the sheer increase in computational power over the past few decades is staggering. According to Moore's law, the number of transistors on a microchip doubles about every two years, though the pace has slowed slightly in recent years. This exponential growth in computing might one day enable simulations of entire universes. On the flip side, there's a healthy dose of skepticism from the scientific community. Many argue that the simulation hypothesis is untestable as a scientific theory. It's more a philosophical or metaphysical proposition than a hypothesis subject to empirical validation. Philosophically, the notion raises complex questions about consciousness and existence. If we were in a simulation, would we ever be able to recognize it? This echoes the thoughts of philosopher Nick Bostrom, who posed the original simulation argument, yet also acknowledged the deep philosophical quandaries it introduces. Moreover, the idea of a simulation implies a simulator, leading to an infinite regress. Who simulates the simulators? This not only complicates the hypothesis, but also aligns it more with theoretical speculation than with provable science. The debate is ongoing, with compelling arguments on both sides. Imagine the implications if we were to find out for certain that we're in a simulation. Such a revelation would send shockwaves through the very foundations of our philosophy, ethics, and existential understanding. At the heart of this conundrum lies the question of consciousness. If our reality is simulated, then what does that say about our consciousness? Are our thoughts and feelings just products of a sophisticated computer program? This raises a fundamental question about identity. If we are mere simulations, does that diminish our sense of self, or does it open up new avenues for understanding what it means to be human? Ethically, the stakes are equally high. The simulation hypothesis could potentially absolve us of responsibility for our actions, as they would be predetermined by the parameters of the simulation. However, it could also impose a new kind of moral responsibility, urging us to behave ethically within the confines of this known artificiality. How we interpret our existence within a simulation could lead to vastly different ethical frameworks and societal norms. From a societal perspective, the realization that we might be living in a simulated reality could alter everything from law to politics to religion. Laws might need to be rewritten to accommodate the knowledge that free will might be an illusion. Political systems might undergo radical shifts as citizens grapple with the implications of a predetermined existence. Religions might either collapse under the weight of such a revelation or adapt dramatically, reinterpreting doctrines to encompass these new truths. On a personal level, the impact is profound. The quest for meaning and purpose central to human existence might take on new dimensions. If life is a simulation, does it make our joys and sorrows any less real? Do our dreams and aspirations still matter? The answers to these questions could redefine personal fulfillment, pushing individuals to either despair or to a new form of enlightenment. The answers to these questions reshape not just how we see the world, but how we live in it. As we reach the end of our journey today, let's reflect on the profound questions we've explored. We delved into the simulation hypothesis, a compelling notion that suggests our reality might just be a sophisticated digital construct orchestrated by an advanced civilization. The implications of such a hypothesis stretch far into our understanding of free will, posing the question, if we are in a simulation, to what extent are our choices truly our own? We examined the evidence both supporting and challenging this hypothesis. Proponents point to anomalies in quantum physics and digital physics as hints that our universe behaves more like a programmed system than a random one. Skeptics, however, argue that these phenomena can be explained by our current understanding of the universe without invoking a simulation. This debate is not just academic. It influences how we see our place in the universe and the nature of reality itself. Whether reality is a simulation or not, 
the quest for understanding continues to challenge and expand the horizons of human thought. What will you choose to believe?